Okay, everybody, thanks for checking out another video from Uncensored Tactical. Uh, in light of the book coming out in a few months, I wanted to focus a little bit more on not just how to pick a lock, but specifically what makes the skill set unique uh, that I teach to people about how to make your most effective and efficient entry possible when it comes to lower kinetic end techniques like lock picking and bypasses. So let's just jump straight in. So here is our scenario today. Uh, let's say I own a trailer and it is hooked up to my personal pickup truck and there is a trailer lock. This is our pretend pickup truck trailer right here. So there's a, uh, a lock on it that's preventing me from separating my truck from my trailer. And let's say I have to get to somewhere important and I can't bring the trailer and uh, I'll get fired or I'll miss a big job opportunity or something. So that's the framing of the scenario. So we're going to pretend that I am not familiar with this specific type of lock, um, but that I do know the techniques that I know. So we'll say, you know, I've never really run across one of these before, but what could we do? Okay. So I walk up to it. The first two things in every target assessment that have to happen for me that I teach everybody else is number one and number two, do I have the moral right to make entry, which I do because I own these things, right? These are mine. And number two, what is my speed or my level of urgency? And that was given in the scenario, which is, it's not to the point where I'm going to take out an ax and start ripping apart my own personal property and damaging it beyond repair, but I'm also in a pretty big rush, right? So there's some level of urgency, a kind of a moderate level. So one, yes, I have the moral right to make entry. Number two, there's a moderate speed that this has to happen in. Number three, I go into my attack vector identification. So what are all the different vectors or all the different ways or techniques or tools that I can use? or entry points on the on the lock itself. So saying I'm unfamiliar with this, I see a keyway, I see that it's a pin tumbler keyway, it's pretty easy to identify, and I go, okay, well with those, I know that we can do raking options and picking options right off the bat. Cool, what else do we got? Well, a lot of cheap padlocks will have some type of bypass on it, and since for this scenario, I'm not familiar with this, I just know that that might be an option down the road that I go to, okay. Um, I also see that there's some tight, here, let me, let me move my big pretend trailer here. So there's some type of shackle bar in here. So I know sometimes with that, there's a shackle a shim technique, a shim bypass you can do. So okay, that might be an option to look at a little later, although it looks like it might be a tough fit. Cool, so we got some options for how I could get in through this. We don't have all the options, but we have some. We've identified some vectors. Next, I do what's called a manual unlock check. It's my fourth step in the face. So I go, okay, is it unlocked already? I'm gonna try and manipulate that that bar, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake it around, I'm gonna inspect it, yeah, okay, it's locked, cool, I did my manual unlock check. Next step, I'm gonna go, what tools do I have with me? And although I'm doing a lot of talking in this video, a lot of this happens almost automatic and instantaneous on scene. So I'm, I'm stopping to explain all these things, but uh, that this happens very fast in real life, it, just in your own head when you don't have to <laughs> verbalize it out loud. So what, what tools do I have? This could include your first line gear, so things like your wallet and your keychain, the, the tools that you keep, small tools that you keep nearby and handy all the time on your person. Uh, it could be your second line gear that could be in a bag in your vehicle, or it could be at your house or somewhere in an office building where you work. It's a, a bag that you can go grab. Um, it, this could also include having tools brought to you, or it could include calling people for a key or a spare key. It could include all sorts of things. So what tools are, are available to you or can you eventually get? All right. So I know what some of those are. I have my first line gear here. I know I have some lock picks and some rakes in here. We might start with those. So tools, great. So step one, moral right to make entry. Step two, what's the speed? Step three, attack vector identification. Step four, what's my unlock check? Is it unlocked already? Step five, what tools are available to me or otherwise attainable? Step six is gonna be uh, now or later. So that's when I make the, that's, this, this is my now or later step. Do I determine that now I'm gonna pause my target assessment and make my entry, or do I do my entry attempt later and I just keep looking around for other options? Okay, for now, I know that I'm gonna pause my entry and try this technique. So when I'm doing my entry, uh, one of the steps for now, now and later is how long does it take my tool to get into play? So how long until the tool gets to the obstacle? And how long would that average type of technique take to apply? What are a couple scenarios for that? Well. If it takes me about one or two minutes to rake this open, great, that takes two minutes. If it takes me zero seconds, rough estimate, to get my tools into play, because they're in my pocket, we'll just call that a zero, it takes zero seconds to get my tools out, 
then I know total it would take me about roughly two minutes to get this technique to work or until I know okay it's not working now I can move on to something else. If however there is a bypass technique available for this lock and I know the bypass takes almost zero seconds to complete but my tool bag is 30 minutes away. Well now that changes things. So if I have my first line gear and I'm not doing very good with raking and picking but I do know that there's an almost definite chance that I can do a bypass techni technique, but it takes a while to get that tool into play. This is the math that you're gonna to start to learn how to do in your head on scene, even if it's rough estimates, to help you not waste your time and to help you do the most effective and efficient entry when you have multiple ones to choose from and time as a factor. So let's say in real life, I'm unfamiliar with this, which I'm not, but we'll pretend I'm unfamiliar. I'm just gonna start with some raking and picking with my first line tools. So now I pause my assessment, I move right into to uh, trying to do my entry. So there's some tools. There's some more tools. And let's just start with my Sparrow's Mace Picks set, which I love. And we'll just see what happens. And remember, if you can adjust your lock to make it more comfortable to get a good angle, make sure you do that too on scene as much as you can. If you can move your body too to get your arms in the right position, try and do that too. So right here, what I just did is anchoring. So instead of picking the lock like this, I've put as much of my body on the lock and on the obstacle as possible to take that play out of the lock, or take that wiggle out. All right, we got it. And I didn't have to do any editing or cutting and pasting to make it look like I was more successful. I am happy to share my failures and my struggles with you guys. So that took, let's see, this is a nine minute video so far. So under 10 minutes, but maybe three minutes ish to do that, right? So that's probably right in line with an average raking attempt on a lock that maybe is not, you know, not one that you breathe on it and it opens right up for you. So that's pretty average for a standard raking attack. 
So having my tools with me, pausing my assessment to go ahead and do that entry took me about three minutes. Now I add this to my mental file, which is, hey, on this lock specifically, and on most padlocks, it should take me less than three minutes to do a, a standard raking entry. Let's say that that didn't work. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and I'm gonna say, you know what, I, these, oh, these lifter picks are not the greatest for, for really good single pin picking, but they're an option. Now, you know what, if I couldn't get this, hold on, let me try and lock this up. If I couldn't get this with raking, I've hit my line in the sand. So when I try my, my entry attempt, I say, how long should this take until I have to take a breath, reassess, and then look for another option? Even if I go right back to the technique, I need to at least reassess, okay, is this working? Do I have other options? I hit that line in the sand, and let's say we'll pretend that raking attack was unsuccessful. Now what? Well, where's my second line gear bag? That's got better tools in it. Well, if it's like one minute away, we'll call that a zero, right? So for all intents and purposes, for easy math, it's going to take almost no time to grab my second line gear. So I grab it and I get some other tools. Well, great. Let's start with that. So if it's in my car and I can see my car from here, I walk to it, I get the bag, I come back. So I get my gear bag and I get a couple different better single pin picking tools. Let me grab those. So just a couple different tension wrenches and lifter picks. And I have a pretty good pry bar here. So I'll start with this pry bar and I'll use a different lifter pick and we'll see what happens. I have had that happen before. I don't know if it did not correctly reset or if just lifting the first pin put all those pins correctly at the shear line. Sometimes that will happen with um, with strange lock biddings, with the occasional bidding. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up and see if that does or doesn't happen again. That's another great lesson. In the field, tools will fall. Be prepared to work that into your entry. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna use the key. Make sure all those pins were reset. Okay, let's try again. And again, if you watch my hands move from being up in the air and picking like this into this, you can see there's a difference. We call that anchoring. That's in order to take the play out of the padlock so you can focus more on your picking. Okay, well, for some weird reason, all I have to do is pick the first and second pin on this, and the whole thing opens right up. So, that's a unique lesson in itself. So, let's also say that that didn't work. For some reason, my single pin picking didn't work. So, pretend that both of my entries so far were unsuccessful, both of my entry attempts. Now, I would do some research. So, let me grab my phone. It's 20, the year 2020 now. So if you have the world's most powerful supercomputer, 
for all intents and purposes, uh, handy. Uh, let's say I search for that specific make model of lock, right? So I've, I Google it, I do the color or the shape or the trailer lock phrase, and I find that there's a video out there. Oh, look at that. So the link to the lock picking lawyers video will be in today's article at uncensoredtactical.com for this video. So let's say I watch that and I go, oh, there's a bypass technique option. Let's say my second line gear is back at my car. And let's say all I have is just my first line tools. Well, I can kind of maybe use a tool for that that I have with me, or I can get the tool that I know is probably going to work for it and set my car. Well, now this changes things. If that attack is instantaneous, but my bag is 30 minutes away, now I have a decision to make. 30 minutes, not round trip, but each way, right? So go 30 minutes, get the bag, come back. That's an hour. Now you get to decide, would I rather lockpick and continue struggling and trying to get this open? Because I know I could probably do it. Do I struggle with that for several more minutes? Or do I put everything on pause and go get my bag for almost a 100% almost likely entry? So that's some food for thought, but let's, let's say however long it takes, I do go get my bag. I get the bag, I come back. I get out the tool, like the one lockpicking lawyer used in his video. And the padlock is locked. And let's say I attempt this entry technique. And it's not working. So that teaches us a few things as well. So I was inspired to do this video because of lockpicking lawyers bypass on the master trailer lock. I think it's a 605 DAT or 650 DAT um, is the, the name and number for it. Um, but the problem was I ordered one of these locks online and I tried to do that technique over and over and over and over and I couldn't get it. Sometimes lock manufacturers will adjust part of their lock design to fix some of these techniques. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they try and it's not really effective, so the technique still works, but, or sometimes I just suck at a technique and you might too, and that's okay, that happens. Build that into your target assessment and into your mental file so you know how to overcome those obstacles if they happen. So I actually bought four more padlocks of the same design and out of these five total, only one of them was I able to achieve that bypass. And I don't know which one it is. It might be this one or in this stack. So I'm going to go through and try that bypass technique. Um, you should definitely watch lock, lock Picking Lawyer's video if you haven't. Again, there will be a link to that, to that in today's article. So let's just see if I can get this technique to work on any of these padlocks. I'll try again here. There it is. I'll do it again without my hand in the way so you can see. That's it. Let's try the other ones. And nope. So that teaches us a lesson as well. So my book, as well as my course, one of the principle-based teaching, um, one of the principles that I teach based on is failures. So failures happen, and sometimes they happen often. And we have to use those to learn from, um, especially when you're buying tools, and especially when you're planning your entry based on a certain technique. 
it's a good idea to play that percentage game to know, yeah, this tool works 90% of the time. This one works 50% of the time. Sometimes it takes this long to do an entry. So you will build your own percentage game to understand what the limitations are of your skill set, and you'll learn what the limitations are of your tools. And failure, that's the only way you learn that limitation is through failing. So if I would have tried that bypass technique here, if I would have bet everything on it, like uh, let's long shot, but let's create a scenario, right? So me and let's say a partner of mine, we're both on an operation and I say, just leave me this one bypass tool. You can take the entry bag and drive away and go to your next entry. I'll be here. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Well, you haven't really built failures in because you might have might have watched a video online and thought every single lock will open like that every time with this tool. And that's not necessarily true. Not that lockpicking lawyer did that. He's fantastic. That's not the point of this show or this uh, video. The point is the world is a weird place. Sometimes entries happen great. Sometimes they don't. I want to teach you a method and it, how to apply the skill set in the field. Not just how to do a technique, but how do we take all this information and put it in a systemized, methodical based system. Wow, real, real redundant, huh? To get you through obstacles effectively and efficiently. Sorry for blabbering. Um, thank you so much for checking out the show. I really appreciate it. Please go check out the podcast. That's where most of my content is at. And please go check out the website. And if you wanna be kept up to date on the book, Go ahead and click on our email subscription link. It should be on every page on the website. And again, I'm so thankful for you spending some time here. See you on the next one.